In today's video, we're going to be taking cameras that can only shoot 60 frames per second, and we're going to look at how we can make them shoot 120 frames per second for free. But before we get into that, we're going to take a look at what the R6 looks like, a camera that can only shoot 4K 60, and see what happens when it shoots 4K 120. So whether you have the Canon R6, R7, R8, or the R10, you'll notice that all of these cameras are only capable of recording 4K 60 frames per second. If you want 4K 120, you need to spend nearly four grand on a Canon R5, which you might not have the budget to do. Or if the only reason to upgrade is for that 120 frames, is it really worth it? Well, that's what this video is for. And quick side note, this tutorial works for any camera that can only shoot 60 frames per second if you want that 120 look. So we'll get into DaVinci and we'll start slowing down our footage. Okay, so once you've recorded your footage, you're going to want to bring it into DaVinci Resolve and we're going to start editing it. So we're just going to drag and drop our video file into the timeline and this is what we're going to be working with. So the first thing you're going to want to do is right click on the video and go to clip attributes and you're going to want to make sure that your video frame rate is set to 23.976. You might notice that yours will be set to 60. That's just going to give you a real time footage and it's going to be very smooth. It's not going to be slow-mo. To change it to slow-mo, it needs to be set to 23.976. So once you've done that, you've now got your normal 60 frames per second slow motion footage. But we want to make this 120. So once you've done that, you're going to want to right click the clip again. And this time we're going to go to retime controls. You notice that you're going to get these blue arrows going across here and this 100% figure. When you go to the drop down, you're going to go to change speed and go to 50%. That's what's going to give us the 120 look. It's going to slow it down uh, by double, essentially. Now, the problem is when you play it back, you're going to notice that the footage is very, very choppy. That's because we're slowing it down more than what the frame rate is being played back at. So this is where the inspector tool at the top right corner is going to come into play. And you're going to want to go down to retime and scale in. So in retime and scale in, you're going to want to click on the first drop down menu and go to optical flow. And then on motion estimation, you're just going to select enhanced better. So when we play back the footage, you'll notice that it's going to be really smooth. And that's because DaVinci's gone in and it's filled in the gaps in between the frames with what it thinks needs to be there to make it one smooth footage. Now, as you saw from the first clip of my dog running around and playing, it works really well. This technique can work flawlessly with very, very minor defects in it. But there are going to be times when if your footage is moving really, really fast or your subject is moving really fast, that it's not going to work so well. And this is an example of that. Okay, so take a look at this clip of Prince running here. Prince is my dog, by the way. So this is him moving very, very fast. Now you can see a lot, and I mean a lot of artifacting. Um, and if you show this to anybody who even doesn't know what they're talking about when it comes to cameras, they're gonna pick up on this. Because the dog is moving so fast, when Da Vinci is looking at these in-between frames and it's guessing what needs to go there, it doesn't have a lot to a lot of data to go off of because of how fast Prince is moving. So if we go back to the beginning of the clip here, um, when he first starts running, so look at these in-between frames. It's just so much artifacting happening, first of all, with his ears. There we go, that's all that there. And then you can see quite a bit of artifacting happening with his tail as well. So with that in mind, this technique can work really well when you're working with a uh, slow footage already, whether you're shooting a wedding and you're filming the bride and groom just very slowly walking um, or you're just getting some really slow B-roll footage. It can work really well. 
If you've got a dog running at 60 miles an hour, it might not work so well, and you might just have to revert to keeping it at 60 frames per second. But when it does work, you do have the opportunity to change to 120, and it can look amazing. All right, so you might have noticed that this was actually my first video on this channel. Uh, it's a brand new channel. So if you enjoyed this video and you found it useful, uh, it would be great if you could leave a like, um, subscribe to the channel because there's plenty more videos coming out and just leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of the video and if there's any particular kind of tutorials or any kind of video you'd like to see in the future. I'll be reading all the comments because there's probably going to be like three. <laughs> But otherwise, I've got a lot planned for this channel. I'm really excited to be getting into it. So yeah, make sure to subscribe for all of that content that's coming soon. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.